Hi, I'm Brett. Today I've got a video update on an engine build that we're starting to put back together and you may have seen in some of our other engine builds. We've shown you what a lot of the components look like in the naked setup of the block on its own, but we thought this was a good opportunity to show you some of the external components that are vital to make sure that you get the right performance and of course the right reliability when you're building these types of engines and when you're shooting for over 300 kilowatts of the wheels it is important to make sure that you got the right package of parts to deliver uh, reliable fuel um, the amount of boost that you want to achieve and of course then make sure that everything is tied in together with the right package to make sure it all works properly because a lot of people often um, go out and buy what they believe are the right parts but don't always make sure that they are the right parts to work together as a proper package. So let's just show you some of these components with this setup. It is a current model STI with the, um, the 2.5 litre EJ series engine. So that's the important part to remember. So um, you may remember we've been um, talking about blouse turbos before. So this is um, a, a common upgrade with the larger silicon intake pipe that you can see down here now, which allows us to flow even more air into the turbo assembly. And of course, the most important thing I want to talk about over here on this side. So we're running um, split fuel rails, meaning that we run one fuel line delivery to one side of the engine and a separate fuel line delivery to the other side of the engine. And the requirement to achieve this is some fairly significant modifications of the fuel delivery system of the way Subaru provides at factory standard, because this current model car has um, dampers on the fuel delivery line and it has factory regulators to control fuel pressure and all of these things need to be modified or deleted or upgraded to make sure that we can then deliver the right amount of fuel to run a split setup. So one of the things you'll notice up the back here, we're now running a GFB fuel pressure regulator, which you'll notice it's got a um, fuel pressure gauge on the front, which doesn't add any features from performance point of view, but makes us a lot easier when we've got it in the dyno so we can check fuel delivery when the engine's under load and conveniently bolts into the firewall quite neatly on the back of this model. And you notice how it's got several lines coming out of it. Um, some of them for the vacuum reference line and also one of them is for the fuel supply and the return. And of course the two lines go into the engine. Now you'll also see down here, um, there's a bit of an unusual one because this is the damper on the factory standard fuel line, but you'll notice this fitting here, which we haven't put a fitting in yet to connect it off. This is where we delete the factory fuel pressure regulator um, with an aftermarket part that just designed to bolt straight onto the original factory components. And then you'll see right down inside here, it's, it's not immediately obvious because we've replaced a lot of this sheathing to make it look original factory standard. But if you look down from the top, you'll see that we've replaced the uh, fuel rail with an aftermarket fuel rail and tucked right down underneath there are the replacement injectors which are a larger capacity injector for us to be able to run the type of grunt that we're expecting out of this engine and you'll notice there's a similar one on the other side and those both those rails run independent fuel lines to and from them to make sure under high load they've got consistent amount of fuel being delivered to them because when you consider this original factory standard fuel system it's quite a long runner of fuel to be delivered and you end up with slightly different fuel supplies to the different cylinders because of the length of the effective fuel rail. So by splitting them in half is therefore making the consistency a lot better on a delivery of the fuel. Um, some of the other things that we're running, the client has opted for a Process West uh, front mount uh, oil cooler kit which you can see is tucked down inside here and I'll show you a standard photo of that which we took before we put the front bumper bar back on and it runs a, a fitting off the bottom of the sandwich plate and these are the replacement lines that come down from the oil uh, cooler heat exchanger underneath the engine where the oil uh, filter is fitted and of course when it all goes back together the package of parts is then going to make us have a lot more confidence in the delivery of when this engine is run up on the dyno to deliver the right power results. So when you're choosing these parts, my advice is don't just look individually at what was supplied. You need to carefully consider the way they all work together. Bigger is not always better. We get a lot of people come to us and say, look, I'm gonna put 1500cc injectors in my car. And we say, why? You don't really need them. I say, oh, well, I thought bigger was better. That's just one example of things you need to carefully consider when you're choosing the parts for your engine. Otherwise, you can end up with something that just doesn't work 
correctly. It's like having three different jigsaw puzzles and putting all the parts together and hoping that all the individual pieces are gonna come out with one um, good outcome. And in actual fact, when you're choosing the parts, it is important to make sure that you choose them carefully because um, there are so many choices on the market now. Um, you have a lot of different ways to scope out these parts to deliver the outcome that you need. And by dealing with someone who has built these engines before, you've got that peace of mind of knowing they all come together correctly. So follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and Instagram. We'll give another update when this car is then up and running and back on the dyno. And you can see just how it all finishes all off when we put the intercooler in place and the air intake and all those other components. But for today, my name is Brett Middleton. Thanks for watching.